Canon EOS 500 released in 1993 to 96 as the EOS KISS in the Japanese markets and the EOS Rebel XS in North America. It is an entry-level autofocus SLR with a cheap but durable plastic body. The EOS 500 shoots 35mm film and uses EF lenses, has a rapid fire of one frame per second, and is equipped with a built-in light meter and flash, as well as a 10 second timer and center point AF, and requires two CR123 batteries to operate. It is quite possible that the EOS 500 is the best option for any Canon photographer who already owns EF lenses as it allows them to get their feet wet in the world of 35mm photography as the EOS goes for around $35 second hand, almost 30 years after its release. Loading film. Loading the film is an easy process. Open the back hatch with the release on the side. Slide the cartridge film into place and pull the film to the end of the camera where the red marker is. Then close the hatch. After the film has been loaded and the camera is moved into one of the photography modes, the film will be rolled out of the cartridge and into the chamber located on the side of the grip. As it does this, there will be a counter that will go up until the entire roll has been moved into the grip, usually up to 36 frames. This indicates how many shots are left in the spool of film. As the film is shot, it will spool back into the cartridge. This design prevents photographers from destroying a roll of film by opening the back case without retracting all of the already shot film back into the cartridge. The camera is fully DX capable and will read the entirety of the film cartridge DX code using the six pins inside the 35 millimeter chamber. This will set the proper ISO using the film used in the camera. If the film cartridge does not have a DX code, you can set the ISO manually from six ISO to 6400 using the ISO selection on the dial. If you have finished shooting and have not completed your roll of film, you can return the film to the cartridge by selecting the rewind setting on the dial and pressing the rewind button also used for the 10 second timer. This will retract the film completely into the cartridge and will not leave a tab. Taking your first photos, fast auto settings. The EOS 500 viewfinder has 90% coverage and one AF point in the center. This is the only point used to acquire focus with the lens. If the camera is not able to achieve focus, you may be too close to the subject for the lens you are using. As well, the AF system identifies and obtains focus using contrast. So by focusing on a subject with low or no contrast, like a white wall, the camera will struggle to obtain focus. The EOS 500 has several settings for photographers looking to avoid the technical side of taking photos. These settings can be found at the bottom of the selection dial. Manual refers to them as the image zones, but they are really just auto exposure settings. At the bottom of the dial is the sports mode. While in this mode, the camera will select a high shutter speed to freeze motion and capture the action of fast moving objects. This mode allows continuous shooting. The flash should not pop up while in this mode. If it does, simply press it back into the lock position. The flower icon located above the sports mode is for close-up photography and macro photography. This is used for maximum magnification of subjects. Note that the camera will not be able to cl focus closer than the lens's minimum focus distance. If this occurs, the focus circle inside the viewfinder will blink two times a second indicating that the camera is unable to gain focus. If the subject is not well lit, the camera's built-in flash may pop up. Using the built-in flash is the fastest way to burn through the batteries. Above the macro modes is landscape mode. The camera will select a higher f-stop for better landscape photos. The flash should not pop up in this setting. Wide angle lenses generally produce the best results in this mode. The final mode before fully auto is portrait mode. This mode will select a lower f-stop for more blurry backgrounds. Note that older lenses may be very soft at wide open apertures. The final mode is full auto, where the camera selects all settings for the scene. This is a great option for anyone who is about to pass their camera off to a stranger. This is great because the camera will take complete control over all settings. Manual settings, creative zones. The EOS 500 separates the more advanced modes from the auto modes 
with a red L that stands for lock, or in other words, a glorified off position. We'll go over how to control each exposure setting individually in a moment, but first we'll go over the creative modes available. P is simply an auto setting that allows you a little bit more control. You can move the wheel up and down and the camera will give you several setting options to expose the image properly. TV mode is the shutter priority, best used for sports. You can control the shutter speed and the camera controls the aperture slash f-stop for proper exposure. AV is used when the depth of field is most important thing, such as when you are taking portrait photography. You control the aperture slash f-stop and the camera will adjust the shutter speed to obtain the proper exposure. M or manual mode gives maximum control to the photographer over the aperture and shutter speed. Since the ISO is determined by the type of film used, there's no changing the ISO without changing the film loaded. ADEPT is designed to guess the proper f-stop or aperture for a given scene and metering areas for group photos. In other words, it is trying to get everything in focus that is inside the metering areas. Basic exposure controls. As a film camera, the EOS 500 has only two main exposure controls while taking photos, aperture slash f-stop and shutter speed. The ISO is always the same and is determined by the film stock selected. The camera will detect the DX code on the film cartridge and use the appropriate ISO. If the film cartridge does not have a DX code, the ISO can be set manually with the ISO selection on the dial. To adjust the shutter speed, spin the front dial. The shutter speed ranges from 30 seconds to 1 2,000th of a second. This is used to freeze motion at higher speeds. 1 200th of a second is usually where action starts to freeze. And 90 to 1 20th of a second is usually a good starting point for most photography. Anything lower than 60th of a second might have camera shake and produce blurred images. The aperture slash f-stop is controlled by the same front dial, but while pressing the back AV button. A lower f-stop will produce more background blur and let in more light. A simple way to think about it is the f-stops is a line of f's coming out of the front of the lens, and you're selecting how many of these f's are in focus. At a lower f-stop, there will be more light that reaches the film, and at a higher f-stop, less light will reach the film. Bulb mode can be toggled by switching the shutter speed past the 30 second setting. Bulb mode is used to capture photos of things like fireworks. The shutter will remain open for as long as the shutter button is pressed. Other buttons and features. The EOS 500 is capable of multiple exposures up to nine. To toggle this mode, press both the star and the AV button at the same time and select the desired number of exposures. The camera will then hold the same film in place for X number of exposures. The most basic and popular is the double exposure. First, set the multiple exposure value to two, then make sure to reduce the exposure of both images you take by one stop so that the film does not get overexposed. Exposure is easy to nail with the built-in light meter. The meter reads, then displays your current settings and exposure compensation on the LCD screen and inside the viewfinder. It displays two stops over and under proper exposure. This will allow you to easily adjust for proper exposure without having an external light meter every time, even while in full manual mode. While in AV, TV, and P modes, you can select the camera to over or underexpose settings by pressing and holding the AV plus minus button and spinning the front dial. This will move the exposure metering setting to under or overexpose for the scene. Since film will capture and retain highlights better than digital cameras, but shadows will be grainy and muddy, it is better to expose for the shadows by overexposing rather than underexposing. This is the opposite of what is typically done for digital cameras. If you enjoy this video and it's helping you out, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon. The light meter will read the entire metering area unless you hold the back star button. The star button allows, when held down, 
to only expose for the center metering area. This is used to expose for backlit subjects that might have large areas of overexposed light around them. In this situation, the photo and normal exposure settings would normally result in an underexposed subject. Using the center metering allows you to read the lighting of the underexposed area and use that readout to expose properly. Don't forget to hold the star button the entire time. Problems and warnings. If while in AV or TV modes, the shutter speed or aperture starts to flash, this means they have been maxed out in an effort to compensate for the selected aperture or shutter speed. Try to adjust the shutter speed on TV mode or the aperture in AV mode until the other setting is no longer maxed out and blinking. As well, if the exposure compensation bar is blinking on the far left or right, it means that it is underexposed by more than two stops or overexposed by more than two stops. If the BC blinks, on the LCD screen, it is because the batteries are extremely low power or it is checking for a mechanical malfunction inside the camera. If the camera is in low light conditions, the light located next to the trigger will illuminate the scene to obtain focus. The auto settings, portrait and macro will automatically pop the built-in flash up when they detect an underexposed situation. If you wish to use the built-in flash for creative zone settings, simply press the flash button at the top right of the LCD screen. Holding this button will toggle red eye reduction. Now prior to taking photos, the AF illuminating light will fire for a second prior to taking the photo. For best results, it is recommended to use a external speed light or flash that is fully articulating mounted on the hot shoot. Next to the flash button is the 10 second timer. This button allows you to set the camera on a tripod and run back to your family to get that wonderful group photo. To cancel a photo before it is taken, simply press and hold the button again before the shot is taken. To exit it, simply press the 10 second delay mode a uh, second time. The beep heard in the 10 second timer cannot be turned off. However, there is a second beep that can be turned on and off by rotating the dial to the beep setting. Use the front dial to select either one or zero, one being on and zero being off. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and comment. As well, feel free to subscribe to join the Film Camera Club. We create tutorials, 